Good morning, friends. Greetings. Welcome to The Bright Side, your nutritional program dedicated to the understanding of the vast world of nutrition and nutritional supplementation. I'm your host, pharmacist Ben, nutritional pharmacist from Boulder, Colorado. I use nutritional supplements where other healthcare practitioners use toxic pharmaceutical drugs and sometimes deadly medical procedures. If you suspect that there are natural nutritional roads to your vitality and health and well-being and to addressing your health challenges, whatever they may be, but you don't know where to begin, you have come to the right place. As you listen to The Bright Side every day, you are more and more in control of your body, you are more and more knowledgeable, and you know you can overcome any health challenge. That's why we're here every day on The Bright Side, helping clear up the sometimes confusing world of nutrition and nutritional supplementation. Over the last 30 years of practicing pharmacy, I have seen drug-free recoveries from diabetes, hypertension, obesity, skin diseases like psoriasis, eczema, rosacea, acne, digestive ailments, autoimmune issues of all kinds, recoveries that by the standards of modern medicine can only be called a miracle, but what is in the world of the body, what is in the world of biology, standard operating procedure because the human biological system is a healing system. It's a regenerating system. It is designed divinely to heal and renew itself on a moment-to-moment -moment basis. And while some folks may call that a miracle, it really is just the way the body works. If you have questions about health or nutrition or prescription drugs, we are here for you. We welcome your calls at 844-236-6010. If you have a success story you'd like to share, if you want to contribute to the conversation, questions about the longevity products or formulations or skin health issues, if you have a comment or a question about our Truth Skin Health products, 844-236-6010 is our number. And, of course, if you want to purchase any of the longevity products you hear advertised on the program or recommended on the program, please head over to brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, or Critical Health News. Dot com and order your Beyond Tangy Tangerine and Healthy Start Pack and Ultimate Niacin or any of your Longevity products right off the website. You can also sign up to join the Brightside Ben team right off the website as well. Or you can call 866-735-2470. That's the Brightside Ben phone team. Tell them you want to join the team for a one-time $25 investment. You can start yourself a business, the longevity business, and help spread the word and make some money at the same time. Help spread the word about how powerful and important a good nutritional supplement program can be and earn yourself some thank you checks all at the same time. Call the phone team at 866-735-2470. They can tell you all about it. And if you're interested in checking out our Truth Skin Health products, including our Truth Omega-6 Healing Cream, Truth Serum, Truth Balm, or Truth Retinol Gel, 5% gel, head over to truthtreatments.com, truthtreatments.com. we got a skin health blog up, and you'll find out, you can find out all about the products and order products right off the website, truthtreatments.com. Okay, welcome back to The Bright Side. We've been talking about the ketogenic diet, a very, very helpful way of eating, generates these powerful brain chemicals, heart chemicals called ketones. We've been talking about the steroid hormones, the youth and fertility and anti-aging hormones. And we've been saying that one of the best ways to upregulate, to stimulate the production of these anti-aging hormones is to calm the body down. Deep breathing, muscle relaxation, especially in the face, the facial muscles and the tongue muscles. Just relaxing the tongue can activate the parasympathetic relaxation nervous system. Of course, controlling eating behavior is perhaps the ultimate way to calm the body down. The ketogenic diet, caloric restriction, fasting. Problem with food and eating is our propensity to eat for pleasure versus eating for need. And a lot of that has to do with brain chemistry, particularly the brain chemical dopamine, which is associated with reward and with pleasure. We've known about dopamine for over 100 years. It was first synthesized in 1910, but it's only been since the 1950s and especially in the last 20 or 25 years that we've begun, really begun to appreciate the importance of dopamine for day-to-day -day life, for how we live our lives. Until recently, it was considered just a precursor or an inter intermediary chemical for the production of other hormones, particularly adrenal hormones. And indeed, dopamine is very, very important for adrenal hormones, especially adrenaline, adrenaline as it's called. But over the past couple of decades, our understanding of the importance of dopamine for healthy brain function has had a really important impact on the treatment of brain disorders, mental health disorders, Parkinson's disease, ADD, obsessive compulsive disorder. Dopamine is also being recognized more and more as the ultimate brain chemical of addiction, which makes sense because we're all addicted to reward. 
It's now recognized that dopamine plays a key role in the development of, of uh, drug addiction, particularly when it comes to stimulants like cocaine and speed. Even caffeine and nicotine have a dopamine connection, addictions to caffeine and, and nicotine. When we feel down or we feel sad or we want to enjoy the pleasure of winning or getting a prize, achieving some kind of success, gambling, winning the lottery, playing cards, all of these are a reflection of a need for dopamine. We're attempting to upregulate dopamine secretion. If you're addicted to gambling, you're addicted to cigarettes, you're addicted to Coke or speed, or if you just can't get enough of the pleasure of winning the lottery or just buying lottery tickets all the time, chances are pretty good that you're trying to upregulate your dopamine. And of course, if we're low dopamine or we're trying to stimulate dopamine, it's very easy to fall into the trap of eating food, lots of food, which is the fastest and easiest way to stimulate dopamine, especially sugar food. Sugar really upregulates dopamine, at least in the short term. In the long term, it will deplete dopamine. But in the short term, eating sugar and, and uh, carbohydrate-rich foods upregulate dopamine. Food manufacturers know this. Marketers and advertisers who work for food manufacturers are quick to exploit this phenomena. And this is especially problematic if we are deficient in dopamine. Some of the signs of dopamine deficiency, according to Dr. Eric Braverman, who's written extensively about this in uh, his book, The Edge Effect, sugar cravings, decreased sex drive, chronic fatigue, sleeping a lot, a history of drug abuse and addiction, weight issues. These are all signs that you may be dopamine deficient. Dopamine, as I say, is a precursor to adrenal hormones, and there's a very important relationship between dopamine and adrenal gland functioning. That means that in addition to dopamine deficiency, many of our unhealthy eating habits, food cravings, food addictions, addictions to sugar can be linked to adrenal gland burnout. And also because the adrenal glands are connected to the thyroid or related to the thyroid, hypothyroidism can do this too. So adrenal gland burnout, dopamine deficiency, hypothyroidism, all of these can lead to a, a food addiction, eating behaviors that are out of control. So when we figure out how to access dopamine without eating, not only will we be able to calm the body down, but we'll also be improving thyroid function, we'll also be improving adrenal gland function, we'll, have, we'll be accumulating anti-aging benefits, healing benefits, youth and fertility hormones will be upregulated. All of, this, all of this can be accomplished by learning how to access dopamine without having to eat, without having to go for food. And of course, we'll benefit our entire body. And the good news is we can do this. We can access and improve dopamine chemistry without having to eat through non-eating mechanisms. If we can learn to reward ourselves in a non-caloric fashion or a non-food fashion, we can lose weight, we can st uh, increase our sex drive, we can improve chronic fatigue, we can wean ourselves off of drugs and alcohol, we can reduce the load on our digestive tract, redirect blood flow and energy from the digestive system, conserving energy from, for the good stuff, for building, for growing, for fighting cancer, for fighting neurodegenerative diseases, for fighting all kinds of chronic degenerative diseases, for creativity, for fertility, for a general sense of well-being. This is all by learning how to access our dopamine nervous system, our dopamine neurology, without eating. And of course, a huge part of this involves making sure that we're getting abundant nutrition. A well nutriated body in terms of protein and fats and carbohydrates, as well as fiber and water and micronutrients, can go a long way towards upregulating or stimulating our dopamine nervous system, our dopamine neurology. And then there's also great nutritional supplements that are specific for dopamine and the adrenal glands and for thyroid and for appetite suppression, it all works together. When we upregulate our dopamine, our adrenal gland, our adrenal glands will, uh, adrenal functioning will improve, our thyroid functioning will improve, and we won't be eating as much. That's where tyrosine comes in. I've talked about tyrosine in the past. Tyrosine is like a, if you take enough of it, it almost acts like caffeine or speed. It's a raw material for making dopamine. The body will turn tyrosine into dopamine. So if you think you may be dopamine deficient, if you find yourself craving sugar or you have problems getting out of bed in the morning or you're noticing your weight is starting to increase or you're addicted to cocaine or drugs or nicotine or caffeine and you want to you want to wean yourself off of these drugs or improve dopamine production, think about getting on a little bit of tyrosine. Not a lot, because if you take a lot of tyrosine, it can make you really jittery, but if you take just enough tyrosine, just a small amount, say 20 to 25 milligrams a day, you may be able to upregulate dopamine without going into the, the jittery effects. All right, we'll finish up when we come back from our break. I'm Pharmacist Ben. You're
Okay, we are back on the bright side. I'm Farmer Spen. 844-236-6010 is our number. Got lines open for you. We'll get your calls here in our next segment. Try to call in early, please, so we can get to as many calls as possible at 844-236-6010. If you have questions about anything we're talking about here today or the longevity products or the true skin health products or something you may have heard about or read about or if you just want to contribute to the conversation, or uh, if you have a success story, 844-236-6010 is our number. And if you want to purchase any of the longevity products you hear advertised on the program, or, or if you want to join the Brightside Ben team, head over to brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, or criticalhealthnews.com. You can sign up right from the website. And if you want to check out our Truth Skin Health products, go to truthtreatments.com, truthtreatments.com. Okay, 844-236-6010 is our number. We're talking dopamine as it has to do with the ketogenic diet and fertility and youth hormones. The ketogenic diet is a great way to upregulate dopamine. Reading from uh, the journal Neuroscience Letters. This is from June 2014. Dopamine, a ketogenic diet, alters the activity of the dopamine system, which may contribute to the diet's therapeutic effect in reducing epilepsy. Yes, you can upregulate Dopamine, get all the benefits of upregulated dopamine by going ketogenic. Just another reason to use the ketogenic diet. You can use supplements to upregulate dopamine. I love tyrosine. You don't want to take too much tyrosine, but if you take just enough, you can get a nice bump in your dopamine levels, maybe 20 to 25 milligrams a day. If you don't want to go to the supplement route, you can eat tyrosine-containing foods. Cottage cheese is one of the all-time great tyrosine-containing foods. High-protein foods in general are going to get you tyrosine, chicken, beef, fish, uh, turkey, oats, other supplements that can help you with dopamine production include phenylalanine, which is similar to tyrosine. It's also found in, in uh, high-protein foods. And, of course, when we take control of our eating behaviors, not only will we will be accessing uh, calming chemistry, turning on calming chemistry and turning on the production of dopamine, we'll also be turning on the production of our youth and fertility hormones and all the inflammatory symptoms that are associated with aging and chronic, uh, chronic degenerative disease will improve. The less we eat, the longer we live. The less we eat, the better we feel. I know that's harsh because we love to eat, but the fact of the matter is caloric restriction is the ultimate anti-aging, anti-inflammatory strategy. This way of eating is called the Cron diet. Calorie restriction with optimum nutrition. Some people call it the Cran diet. Calorie restriction with adequate nutrition. Either way, it's a powerful, powerful anti-aging and healing strategy. All chronic degenerative diseases, all of them. This is 80% of our health costs and 80% of our health misery. Something like 60% of Americans have at least one chronic degenerative disease. It gets worse as we get older. Something like 70% of people over the age of 60 or 70 have two chronic degenerative diseases, and they're all linked to food and digestion. With the exception of infections and injury, there is no chronic, long-term, progressive disease that does not have a fundamental food and digestive component. Take that to the bank, folks. No matter what your health challenge is, look to the digestive system and look to food. This is not an assertion. This is, it's not even only, it's not even fact. It's just common sense. It's fact and it's common sense. That's because for internal long-term progressive disease to be present, the blood has to be chronically contaminated. The blood and the lymph, the circulatory system, is the bridge between the digestive system and disease. When the digestive system breaks down, which it does over time, the blood ultimately becomes dirty and contaminated, the lymph becomes clogged, and it is a short hop to degenerative diseases of all kinds from that point. The blood has to be chronically contaminated for degenerative disease to show up. The blood has to be dirty. Toxemia, toxic, sepsis, whatever you want to call it. The blood has to be dirty for chronic degenerative disease to show up, period. And specifically, it's the intestine that is the major point of entry of the dirt into the circulatory system, into the lymph and into the blood. Now, I'm not talking here about specific symptomology. I never talk about specifics, or rarely anyway, talk about specific symptomology. It's all, it's all systemic. It's the entire body. 
It's the entire system. That's how you know it's the blood. It's because the entire system is affected. If you have an issue, a health challenge that is affecting you from head to toe, that's covering the entire body, that's dispersed throughout the body, what else can it be but the circulatory system? And if it's a circulatory issue, it's got to be a blood issue, or got to be a digestive issue. Nothing gets into the blood without entering, to the di- entering in through the digestive tract with the exception of, of uh, intravenous drug abuse or perhaps vaccines. We don't need specifics to be healthy, folks. We don't need to name our disease to be healthy. It doesn't matter what you call your disease. The nomenclature, the naming of special diseases, the naming of individual illnesses is for specialists, not for patients. It doesn't make us any better. It's for standards of care, for governments and insurance companies, medical associations and professionals, not for us, not for patients. Naming diseases giving specific diagnoses addressing symptoms serves the pharmaco medical corporate model not us it's not for us your diagnosis doesn't matter special diseases are for specialists not for patients the body has a generic quality we don't need to know the specifics if we want to be healthy specifics are for specialists and not only are they unnecessary they don't do us any good we don't need to know the specifics They take attention, and they take power, and they take control away from the body. And they hand it over to doctors and to pharmacists and to experts and authorities. They're the tools of the trade. Specifics and symptoms are the tools of the trade for surgery, for drugs, and for for radiation. It's how we get drugged out. It's how we get radiated. It's how how we uh, are allowed to uh, or allow the medical model to take out our organs. We think that it's all about the gallbladder. We think it's all about, about the uterus. We think it's all about the breast. So take it out. Yank it out. And then my gallbladder pain will be removed. We don't realize it's about the entire system. The good news is, the bright side is, is when we take care of the general principles, what I call the bright side philosophy that we talk about every day on this program, the body itself will take care of the specifics. If we take care of the general principles, and it starts with food, the body will take care of the details. Write that down. We take care of the general principles, food, sugar, relaxation, oxygenation, the, the, the uh, square of health, the fourfold square of health, nutrient, oxygenate, move and rest, the body will handle the details. And of course, while well, the brain's important when it comes to stress and anti-stress, there's also a non-brain aspect, a purely physical, non-mental aspect to stress, which, like everything else in the body, is controlled by hormones, particularly our steroid hormones, our youth and fertility hormones, which are responsible for the long-term building and long-term growth and repair and long-term anti-aging. All of this is, all of this has to do with activation of the parasympathetic nervous system, relaxation of the stress response, turning off the sympathetic nervous system, and improving all chronic long-term degenerative diseases. And this is where our three youth and fertility hormones come into play. I've not forgotten to talk about these. We talked about pregnenolone. We talked about progesterone. We haven't talked about DHEA yet. We are going to be talking about DHEA because it's super duper duper important. These are your three youth and fertility hormones. And, by the way, like all the steroid hormones, they're versions of cholesterol, perhaps the single most important molecule in the body, cholesterol. They all come from, all the youth and fertility hormones come from from cholesterol, as does the alternative or antagonistic hormone to the youth and fertility hormone, which is cortisol. All right, I'm Pharmacist Ben. 844-236-6010 is our number. If you're dealing with a health challenge you want help with, we can help you. 844-236-6010 is our number. We'll take a quick break and come back on the bright side right after this. Don't go away. Okay, we are back on the bright side. I'm Pharmacist Ben, 844-236-6010 is our number. We've got lines open for you, and we will get your calls here in just a second. If you're interested in checking out our longevity products, head over to brightsideben.com, criticalhealthnews.com, or pharmacistben.com. And if you'd like to take a look at our Truth Skin Health products, especially our Retinol 5% Gel, if you're dealing with blemishes or acne or dark spots or wrinkles or you want to prevent wrinkles or fine lines, nothing beats Retinol, the ultimate go-to topical anti-aging ingredient. And uh, along with vitamin C, those are your number one and number two. They're probably equal, actually. Anti-aging ingredients, of course, if you're dealing with retinol, you've got to have enough of it. There's so many skincare products out there that pur- purport to have retinol benefits, and they'll put a trace amount of this stuff in there. And I see commercials for that all the time. I've been working with retinol now for tw- uh, 30 years, since the 1980s. I first discovered it in my compounding pharmacy. 
and I started using it for treating acne, acne blemishes, started experimenting with high concentrations of it. It's amazing, amazing stuff. It is somewhat aggressive. You will flake. But it is amazing stuff for anti-aging and for blemishes. And, of course, when you, have, when you add vitamin C into the mix, you've got your two most important active anti-aging ingredients. And you'll find both in our retinol 5% gel, True Serum, Truth Balm, and Truth Omega-6 Healing Cream all leverage the power of vitamin C as well. You can find out all about it at truthtreatments.com, truthtreatments.com. All right, from the journal Science Translational Medicine, I love this article. A new study from Massachusetts General Hospital provides additional evidence that amyloid protein, which is deposited in the brain of Alzheimer's patients, Alzheimer's disease patients, is actually an immune chemical. It's part of the body's immune system. The plaques and the tangles and the fibroids that are or fibers that are associated with Alzheimer's disease are actually part of the inflammatory and immune system. Imagine that. How? Who knew? Well, we did. We've been talking about that for decades, literally, since the 1990s when I first started studying Alzheimer's disease. The fibers and tangles that are secreted in the patients of Alzheimer's disease, in the brains of Alzheimer's disease patients, are part of the inflammatory system and the immune system. Alzheimer's disease is an inflammatory immune disease. It's a defensive response. You don't need to be vaccinated. You don't need any drugs. You need to figure out what's getting into the blood that's activating the immune system. And once you do, Alzheimer's disease symptoms will reverse themselves. And I've seen it with my own eyes, and it doesn't take very long. Sugar, of course, is the ultimate toxin for the blood, and Alzheimer's disease is now known to be type 3 diabetes. It's a sugar disease, which is an inflammatory disease. Sugar is pro-inflammatory. Even more interesting, according to this article, it turns out that the amyloid fibers are actually a natural antibiotic. They actually have natural antibiotic properties. Could it be that the body is trying to control some kind of, some kind of uh, assault, perhaps some kind of infection? In any case, the amyloid proteins are functional. They're there for a reason. They're not to be vaccinated away or talk poisoned away. This is why doctors can't figure out the relationship or why people have these amyloid plaques. It's so important, you guys. Alzheimer's disease is just a awful, awful curse and tragically unnecessary. 844-236-1610 is our number. I'm Pharmacist Ben. You're listening to The Bright Side on the Genesis Communication Network. Let's go to Oregon. And welcome. Carl, the truth raider to The Bright Side. What's up, buddy? How you doing, Carl? Oh, I'm just absolutely amazed and just absolutely phenomenal and awesome information as usual, Pharmacist Ben. Thank you. I have three interesting things. Today's topic is going to be today. <laughs> Today's truth topic Raider, is, go, is going to be Raider, today. Truth Raider is, tips. Okay, Truth Raider tips. What's up? <laughs> There's the jingle. Okay. Coconut oil, beyond Love it. tangy tangerine, and eucalyptus. Yes, I haven't heard you mention this one before. Wait, wait a minute, wait a minute. You say all together? Put them all together? No, these are three things that you can use separately, but they're all for the same common good. Yeah? Talk Eucalyptus to me. oil is the third, beyond tangy tangerine is the second. And coconut oil. Uh, how did you coconut f- oil, I use, uh, this is something that maybe some people use and some people may not use. But using coconut oil on irritated skin a little bit, mm. that, I've, that I've tested and tried it out, mm. soothes the skin and, and the irritation goes away within minutes. Nice. Yeah, you, uh, coconut oil is a source of vitamin E, which is one of the most skin-friendly of all the vitamins, and it's very anti-inflammatory and soothing, so that makes perfect sense. Plus, uh, plus, coconut oil just feels great on the skin. The, the fats feel really gr- good on the skin. I'm not a big believer in oil on, using oil on the skin, but coconut oil and jojoba oil are two oils that uh, you can have some benefits. Jojoba oil, we haven't talked about that one. That's really neat. That's not even an oil, technically. But coconut oil's got wonderful benefits. It's a great makeup remover. It's a great cleanser for the skin. has soothing properties. It's tasty. It's got all kinds of wonderful benefits. I'm a big fan. Absolutely. And, now, let me get right. on to this little story really quick here. Yes, sir. It's totally out of season right now for the pansy flower, for example. Okay. We're going to, into the summer season, and we're going to be going into the summer plants. Okay. And I had a couple plants that were not doing very well, and they were turning yellow, and they are not producing flowers anymore. So I was about ready to throw them out. But I got my jug of Beyond Tangy Tangerine, got some clean water, yeah. And just put not very much, just a little few sprinkles. That's all you need, folks. Just a little sprinkle of Beyond Tangy Tangerine. Mix it really good in the water. Yeah. Put it in like a little watering pitcher or something like that to water it and lightly water the plants. Yeah. And in two weeks, 
they started turning green again. In the That's third awesome. week, they started developing blooms all over. And in the fourth week, I had eight beautiful blooms on just one plant alone. I love it. I love it. Yeah, <laughs> plants awesome. benefit. Plants benefit from the mighty 90 essential nutrients, too, especially the minerals. And we all know that our soils are mineral deficient. Thank you so much for that, Carl. I appreciate it. Absolutely. I, gotta, I want to get to a... You got anything else? The eucalyptus oil, real quick. I want to talk okay, about real quick. Eucalyptus. This is a great antihistamine as well. Yes, sir. My rash has been bothering me for years, but I started spraying this product. Uh, I don't know by name it is. So somebody who's like a natural, uh, maybe a homeopathic type of thing or a herbalistic type of uh, eucalyptus oil company, but it has a eucalyptus spray bottle and it's a pure eucalyptus oil, and you spray that on the the affliction, and within days the rash starts to secede. Nice. Starts to go away, and, and I've been using that regularly. And for foot fungus. Oh yeah. Very important folks. Lots for nails. Foot for the nails or for yellow, the toes. Yellow nails. I mean, you've got crusty feet. You have problems with that itching and that burning and that tickling feeling with yeah. having athlete's foot. Spray this. Clean your feet really well, folks. And spray some of this eucalyptus oil. You'll probably have to go to a health food store somewhere to find it. Maybe Pharmacist Ben offers that in his products. Or mm, not yet, yeah, although I use it in I use it in some of my skincare. I do love eucalyptus oil. Yeah, good deal. It wipes it out within two weeks. Your feet turn back to being pink again, and the irritation completely goes away. Thank you, Carl the Truth Raider, for the Carl yeah. the Truth Raider tips. Have a great day, buddy. That's good it. to talk to you, man. Take yeah. care. All right, uh, Robin in Oklahoma. What's up? Welcome to the bright side. Hi, Ben. Um, I have a question. I'm 56. Yes, ma'am. And I think I'm in. I think I'm in a puzzle. My blood work shows that I am. Just but, starting? Are you just starting at 56? No, no, no. I was, I, I was in perimenopause in my mid-40s, so I've okay. always dealt with hormone issues. But my question to you is, I've been taking bioidentical uh, compounded uh, triest and, and progesterone cream, okay. which me to the troche progesterone. Okay. So I'm on the, and I started having breakthrough bleeding. And, okay. And, too much progesterone, you can just imagine the depression. So okay. my question to you is, um, I, I do the healthy shake, I do the tangy tangerine, I don't eat bread. I mean, I keep you, want, you want some strategies for, for the yeah, progesterone? Please. Oh, we've got lots of them. Got lots of them. First right. of all, there's a great new longevity product called Xerofem, which you might want to take check out. And there's also wonderful herbs, and there's also good nutritional supplements. Hang tight, and we'll, uh, we'll get you some progesterone ideas here when we come back. Okay. I'm Pharmacist Ben. You're listening to The Bright Side. If you're on hold, hang on. We'll get to you when we come back from our break. We'll take a quick, short commercial break, and uh, we'll be back with more good health information right after this. Don't go away. All right, we're back on the bright side. I'm Pharmacist Ben. 844-236-6010 is our number. If you want to purchase any of the longevity products, please head over to brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, or criticalhealthnews.com. Let's see. We're talking to Robin in Oklahoma. You there, Robin? Yes. Okay. So, uh, first of all, I'm, uh, I think your, uh, your breakthrough bleeding, as they call it, the spotting, is probably more to do with the estrogen than the progesterone. Right. Estrogen is, is really notorious for that. Right. Uh, so, what you want to really think about doing is, is balancing out that estrogen. There's a couple strategies you could do. The progesterone will help, of course. You may need a little bit more progesterone. Are you using progesterone in a cream, or is it uh, orally? Yeah. Or you said a trochee, right? Yeah, she's me to a trochee, so, okay, probably yeah. you weren't getting the same, you weren't getting enough benefit or effect yeah. from the from the transdermal, from the skin progesterone. So the trochee may help you. A couple other things you might want to consider doing: always use vitamin E with progesterone, and this is really especially important for folks who are doing progesterone cream. Vitamin E helps progesterone cream more, work more effectively, and it also improves the penetration of the progesterone. So if you have a compounding pharmacist who's making you a progesterone cream product, make sure you tell them you want to add vitamin E to the cream, and if you're taking progesterone as a trochee, you may want to start to add about 400 international units of vitamin E a day into your program. Vitamin A can also have a beneficial effect on progesterone by helping balance out uh, the effects of estrogen. E and A, of course, work together. They're fat-soluble vitamins. And for many women, as they get older, they don't absorb their fatty foods or their fatty nutrients as effectively. So uh, it may be that you're running vitamin E and vitamin A deficient, especially if you're not supplementing with additional vitamin E and A. 400 international units a day of vitamin E, and also um, it's also important to use uh, uh, 20,000 international units of vitamin A a day. Zinc is also very important for hormones, as are the B vitamins. I'd be using 50 milligrams a day of zinc. I'd be taking extra B complex. You'll get some in the Beyond Tangy Tangerine, of course, and then also a vitamin B6 is particularly 
particularly helpful or can be particularly helpful for all hormone health issues. For folks who are on birth control pills or taking hormone replacement therapy, B6 is a very, very important vitamin that many folks don't get enough of. You'll get some in the Beyond Tangy Tangerine. Personally, I'd be taking a little bit of extra B6 and a little bit of extra zinc picolinate as well. And then last but not least, there's a really neat product from Longevity that just came out well, came out a few months ago called Xerofem. And that one's made with vitamin, uh, vitamin A as well as vitamin E, but it also has niacin in there, vitamin C, and then it has a bunch of herbal material as well. Um, and it's got some of the, some of the uh, immortalium ingredients in there. It's called Xerofem. And then if you want to go the herbal route, chaste tree berry, also known as Vitex, can be helpful. Uh, a red clover can be helpful. Uh, red clover can be helpful. Red raspberry can be helpful. There's an over-the-counter product called Remy Femin that I believe is made with something called blue cohosh or black cohosh. Those are herbs that can help you. you get all these in an herbal. You can get all these in an herbal store, or you can make your own herbal tinctures, uh, which is the way I, I like to do it. Is where you just go buy the herbs off the internet or at Whole Foods or at a health food store and make your own tinctures at, with alcohol and glycerin. I'm sorry, you had a question? Yes, I have a. I do. How? I mean, how long does a woman? How long are we on these? I mean. Is it forever? Right, uh- well, yeah, it wouldn't hurt you, forever? but you cert- yeah, of course. You, and the nutrients, especially the herbs, you don't need to stay on forever. But but the nutrients, no, I'm yeah, you want about the hormone replacement. Oh no, well, it depends. Some women do stay on them forever if you want to kind of maintain. Supposedly, you'll help help maintain youth. I would st- I wouldn't stay on estrogen forever. In fact, I'd be really careful with estrogen anyway because that's mm-hmm. that, that's a very dangerous, a potentially dangerous substance. It's not really in the body in very high amounts. The amounts you're taking when you use a cream or using a drug are tens or hundreds of times the amounts that are in your blood, even thousands of times that are even, in your blood. Even, even, quote, bioidentical? Yeah, there's no such thing as bioidentical. That's, some not. marketing guy came up with that term. Okay, uh, so what uh, am I taking then? What am, I'd be using the progesterone without the estrogen if it was me. Okay. Uh, you'll have to see how you do. Stay on the estrogen only as long as you think you need it. Uh, once you go through, comp- to- you're, are you in to- you're not in total menopause. You're not having, you're having zero periods. That's how you can tell. Uh, yeah, I'm not supposed to. Too, but of course, too much estrogen. Yeah, that's right. No, I, that's right. I, I'm in menopause. I'm menopausal. Now. I would be weaning off. If it was me, I'd be weaning off the estrogen, staying on the progesterone, making sure I was using DHEA, which we'll be talking about here mm-hmm. in the next couple of days. Maybe pregnenolone, but but progesterone and DHEA is what I'd be sticking to if it was me. Okay. Well, I'm I'm following all your protocols. There. Okay. You lined out except for the except for the herbs and all. Couple last things for you. Last things. Make yeah. sure you're using omega three fatty acids, I but know. all the EFAs, but especially omega threes, and make sure you're working on fat absorption. That's the key right there. Because if you don't, if you're not absorbing your fats, you're not going to absorb your fatty nutrients or your EFAs, so and that can compromise gut? your hormones too. That's through the gut. Through the gut. That means digestive enzymes, probiotics, etc. You know the drill, you know, probably. You know those little bubbles they put over people when they have a great idea? Yeah. Your bubble should be a stomach <laughs> and intestines. <laughs> Uh, that's that's, you're going. right. You're right. It should be. Good deal. Thank, Thank you so you. much, Robin. Have Bye. a great day. Thanks for calling. All right, Joe in Texas. Welcome to the Bright Side. Good morning. What's up? Joe, Joe, Joe. Do we have Joe? Yes, sir. Hey, what's up, Joe? How you doing, man? Uh, hey. Yeah, listen, I, I got a little problem with uh, my wife's having a problem. She's uh, 72. She weighs about 130 pounds. For the last several months, I mean, she's been, she can't eat anything no matter what she eats. She has Severe diarrhea. Okay, that's not good. How old did you say? Seventy. Yeah, she's seventy-two. Never happened before. Uh, well, off and on, but. I you could, two, I'd be doing a fast. This is that, that's a serious problem because that means malabsorption and that can accelerate her aging and ultimately her demise and lead to all kinds of problems. So, uh, uh, here's the deal: you want to do a, uh, a fast, a Swero V cleanse. That is, we use a half a bottle of Swero V every hour for two or three days, completely f- go food free for two or three days. Then, when she starts eating again, see if she can notice specific foods that make the, that cause diarrhea, that stimulate diarrhea, or make it worse. And then she's going to want to avoid those foods. All right. It could be that the body is trying to eliminate something. That's what diarrhea okay. is. It's yeah. diarrhea is diarrhea is one of the ways the body evacuates stuff that it doesn't. It's it's not agreeing with. Or it can also be a sign that she's not absorbing her minerals. 
When you don't absorb minerals in the intestine, in the small intestine, which is where they're supposed to be absorbed, those minerals pass through into the large intestine, and minerals attract water. They're like water magnets. And as those minerals that are not being absorbed pass through the uh, small intestine and enter into the large intestine, they'll pull water along with it, and you can go into diarrhea. So it's either a sign of some kind of food toxin that's getting into the intestine or and something that the body's trying to get rid of, or it's a sign of lack of absorption. You're not going to know until you do the elimination diet and start to work with food elimination and a food diary. As, as, as it is, she eats hardly anything. And she still has diarrhea? Yeah. Uh, well, that's a, that's, a, that's a sign that the body is not absorbing something. So whatever she's eating, it's not being absorbed. You can't have diarrhea if you don't eat. If there's nothing in there, you're not going to have diarrhea unless you have some kind of infection. Yeah, well, you know, uh, so how could, how could someone really go a couple of days without eating? Easy. Well, what easy. Would suggest that she would be eating? You know, nothing. Okay. It's easy to do. It just sounds scary, but it's really easy to do. Now, if you were eating for mental reasons and psychological reasons, it's tricky because, you know, we're, we become brain addicted. That's different. But from a purely physiologic standpoint or perspective, it's very easy to not eat. Now, the first hour or a couple hours or four or five or six hours or half a day may be a little difficult because she's used to eating. But after that, she's not even going to want to eat. So, but you have to do it because until you figure out what's causing, what's getting into the system that's causing the, the diarrhea, it's going to keep happening. And you can't figure it out until you clear the decks, until you hit the reset yeah. button. So food, uh, uh, fasting for a couple of days, then the elimination diet, food diary and the elimination diet. You can also try, once you get going with foods, using digestive enzymes and, and uh, the supplements that support the processing of foods. Probiotics can be very helpful. You know, a, yeah, right a, now uh, we have, uh, my daughter got her some probiotics. Make sure it's she a lot, a, a, enough she probiotics. Huh? I'm sorry, say, say again? Probiotics. Yes. Is she on any prescription drugs, by the way, Joe? Oh, yeah, she's on a bunch of them. And, and I'm okay. okay. You know what, Joe? You got more going on. You got more going on. There's probably all... What, what is she on? What kind of drugs is she on? Well, you know, she's had a couple of stents, and I know she's got a statin of drugs, and I know that you've been talking about that for a long time. I'm Statins just... can easily cause diarrhea, first of all. Any drug can cause diarrhea because, as I say, diarrhea is one of the ways the body evacuates poisons. So it, it could, if you look in the package insert for any prescription drug, diarrhea is a possibility, except for antidiarrheals, of course. But most prescription drugs have that component to them. So it could be that. That's what I'd be looking at if she has heart, uh, heart issues, if she's got a stent, uh, had a stent yeah, put well, in. Yes, she does. She does have heart issues. Well, if she has heart issues, then she could very easily have digestive problems. She could have fat malabsorption. There's a very important relationship between bile and the liver and the heart. A lot of stuff going on there, uh, Joe, and it's very difficult to tell you on the telephone, but I would be looking, if, if it happened all of a sudden, I would be looking at foods. You may want to have her lay off her prescription drugs for a little bit and see if that improves the condition. You know, there's more, there's tons of stuff I could tell you. You're going to need to call back because we're out of time, but basically you're looking at the body trying to evacuate something, whether it's a prescription drug or whether it's some other food toxin, some kind of food toxin, or whether it's a lack of absorption of minerals, uh, I can't tell you on the phone. Uh, if you want a quick relief, some quick relief, use bentonite clay. That'll suck up the excess moisture and it'll slow down the movement of foods through the intestine. And we're out of time. I apologize, Joe. Thanks so much for your call, though. Thanks for listening, Thank friends. You. I'm Pharmacist Ben. Have yourselves a beautiful, spectacular day. We'll talk to you all later. Bye for now.